one chore is I need to walk around this entire yard and pick up all the dog poop that's everywhere. So I decided a while ago I'm taking this guy out, so I'm not really worried about him. This guy here is going to start dropping all his leaves, but our pepper patch looks amazing. His marigolds are gorgeous. I was really worried. It came over and checked this yesterday, and I'll show you the corn in a minute because a lot of that got blown over, but it got blown over last time too. But yeah, these guys are on the small side, but my fault because I've not done anything to them. I haven't, I've fed them like twice, maybe once. I haven't trimmed them up at all. Um, I haven't covered more of their stems, so, but I'm not really concerned. The peppers are my pride and joy over here. See how many peppers are on everything. But um, yeah, so let's take a look because I really need to come out like a top of my list. Needs to be staking all these guys up. Got a whole bunch of the purple cayenne coming in like all over. But yeah, definitely gonna need to stake up a bunch of these. Let's see if we find any more hornworms today. Looks like there could be one. Yeah, nope. But yeah, these are banana peppers. These are the Greek pepperoncini. You can see there's a couple more red ones coming in, which is excellent. These are so pretty. These are the jigsaw peppers. And even if they don't put off any peppers or their peppers are super small, they are so pretty to me. I will just keep growing them just because how gorgeous they are. I gotta stake this guy up better. It's our marigold that's going crazy. Let's see, this guy looks great. I'll check him shortly for hornworms. I'm sure there's at least one or two because that's just usually how it works. You could see the damage the last one did, like how a lot of these are just end on absolutely nothing. These, oh, I think I just saw one, like out of the corner of my eye. I'm really good at spotting them out of my peripheral vision, so. But yeah, all of these are, so I haven't fed them like I should either. These are the Corno de Toro. I found two on here yesterday, and this is the pepper plant that I talked about. Like, I've been so excited trying to grow it for three years. These are just huge. Look how gorgeous these peppers are. And they're the red, so they'll be red when they're ripe. Oh my gosh, and look at this. There's like a whole bunch more growing in on this one. Amazing. Oh, I love flowers. This guy yesterday, I wanted to come out and stake him, but I was already so sick and the wind was just making it so hard to breathe. But look how many peppers are in here. So I will grow. I grow my own bamboo. I need to actually cut the seasons down quite a bit. Oh, look at these. These are easily some of the most beautiful peppers I've ever grown. Ever. Like, and I, I always grow peppers, but the peppers this year just, oh, stunning. You can see this is the gochu, hongochu, for the gochu garu. They'll get longer and red. These two were small, so I decided to let them dry up here, and I'm going to go ahead and take their seeds and plant some more. But yeah, I'm sure when I go through here, I'll find a couple more hornworms, and chickens will be happy. So this is what the wind did. Last time, the wind blew a lot of this over, and at this point, like, obviously... A lot of it's blowing over. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna go ahead, harvest whatever ears I've got. I've got a couple good size ears. This is a sweet corn, but you can also let it dry and be a dry corn. I chose to go ahead and let it dry because I really, like I said, once the wind started blowing it over, um, I really didn't have high hopes for it. So yeah, we'll just take it. The dry could be used for things like masa. You can see the kernels on these it got decent pollination on a lot of these even for falling over but um yeah next time if i plant corn on this hill again which i might in the future if i do though uh, i'm probably going to plant it about an extra inch deep so like two inches deep and then i will probably mound up the dirt a couple more inches as it grows in uh, let it put down more base roots and yeah i think that's how i'm going to do it with this so but maybe I'll do some dry beans, another round or two of dry beans. I could put quite a few in this small area. This I'm really excited about. So these are the tromboncino squash that we've got climbing up our sumax here. See, that guy goes way up there. And we got this one here, and this is what I'm so excited about. Excuse me, corn. So this, you see, he goes through there all the way up, way up there, way up the, oh, do you see that flower? So check this out. Let's see if I can get a good angle of it. Do you see that? That's a squash. That's a tromboncino squash. You can Google it, see how big and awesome they are. They can be summer squash or winter squash, but it's my first one and it's exactly what I wanted. Basically, I'm turning my, my sumac here into a tromboncino tree. So I'm very excited. I like it when I have an idea and then I put it together and it actually works. I love it when an idea comes together.
But yeah, so it's growing from that side. Our moonflower still doesn't put off any flowers, but it's starting to put on a lot of leaves. And the wind definitely does do a lot here, but as we build all this up, because I want to put like fruit trees and stuff along here, you can see the bamboo. I need to basically harvest all of that and then let it grow back in again for next year. But yeah, so that's this section, which I'm so happy with. Let's go ahead and walk over and go to, where should we go? Let's go to the Asian garden next. Before we actually even get into the Asian garden, let's talk about these two cactus, cacti, that are outside the Asian garden. So when we moved in, this was just like a nice, perfectly straight, up and down, round cactus. That one too. Put on a lot of flowers. So Terry Gray hit this with her little Jeep like got right after we moved in pretty much so I put the stake through it and you can see it's grown pups but it's growing sideways because of some of those pups that guy's nice and straight though over here this guy was growing up perfectly straight and then suddenly well not so much suddenly it's more because I cut off their water because I switched the water to go here and I've mentioned before like when we first moved in the way they did the irrigation here is they had everything on one line in one area. So cactus don't need very much water at all, even out here. But these need water multiple times a day. So when you're watering this too much, it doesn't really grow. A lot of times they'll die. They'll get root rot. They'll just get too much water, get heavy, fall over. So this guy and this guy have not had direct water. All the water they get is whatever they get from the Asian garden for like probably two weeks or two weeks, two months. And yeah, but now they've got all these pups. So if any of you grow any cactus like this, let me know and let me know how to remove the pups to transplant elsewhere and how to replant him so he's more straight without ripping my hands apart. That'd be great. But yeah, so here we go, Asian garden. Like I mentioned, not gonna be doing these sunflowers again. Um, there are definitely a lot of seeds and these seeds are big. You can see this is one of the Mongolian giants. You can see the seeds in there. And if you don't know, if you haven't seen other videos on it or just don't know, so a sunflower head is actually made of a, a bunch of flowers. All these were little flowers, bees came and pollinated them. And then underneath them, when they come off, I can't really do this one handed. I'll try, I'm gonna try for you. Here we go, ready? So these come off and there are your sunflower seeds. See, stunning. This does have a lot of seeds. So we'll see, maybe I'll do these again just for the amount of seeds they put on. But in all honesty, the Russian mammoth that I grow, they put on just many and their head's much bigger. So we'll see, I'll see how many, I'll probably weigh out how much I get. And then these are the um, red sun that never turned red. These are obviously much smaller, but you can see the seeds in there. So yeah, I'm really bummed about these. I was really excited for the punches of red, but oh well. Uh, what else? Let's go in here and check it out. Got a lot of new Futsu squash that are growing in that are getting pollinated. There is this guy. And then I think there's another one down here somewhere. I don't want to waste a ton of time. This guy, I doubt he got pollinated, but you never know. And then this is the one that's been growing for quite a while. It's kind of growing through the chain link fence. Not too worried because we're taking out this chain link fence. So I kind of think it's cool. So I'm just sort of letting him grow in the fence, but I am very excited for him. And yeah, we got a couple more that are coming in. Our Orient Wonder, these are the other two. Do need to take care of these ants today. They are ridiculous. But yeah, I'm probably gonna, to be honest, after I'm done making this video, come back, pick these and eat them. Yeah, so we got, are you, that's the old, still the only one. I think a big issue is the aphids right now because the ants are definitely trying to farm the aphids. So once I get that under control, I have found a couple more ladybugs. It'll make it a lot easier. But yes, these guys are starting to put on beans. Got our futsu. We'll go over this way and then we'll wrap around so that we can get into the grow bag garden. Got our eggplant all coming in having a bit of an issue with a couple of the eggplant you can see a flower on that one these are the ichiban japanese eggplant and they are they were coming in really really well and then having to change out the irrigation i think is kind of kind of causing a problem but we'll get it get it ironed out still got this guy here growing in our first bitter melon <sighs> need to feed everything tonight our Hullis Japanese corn that has been coming in. You can see the silks and it's been pollinating. Come out here myself and pollinate as well. 
And then, yeah, we have an amaranth here that's finally starting to really come in. If you can see it. And another amaranth here. And then this is the wasabi greens that are finally starting to come in. Should thin them out. I haven't decided if I will. Our sweet potatoes, Japanese sweet potato. They're really starting to take off. Because they've got all this to help them with the shade. <sighs> We've got a lot of our Thai basil here and in the other bed. But you could see. Oh, look. There's one in there. I hope he po got pollinated. That would be awesome. Because that's a really good space for him to grow. I need to clean this up, but it's not a priority. It's not going to be a huge deal if I don't clean it up right now. <sighs> okay. So now we'll come over here. And this is the Japonica striped corn. This is the cool one that has like three right here, three ears here, and then another one down there. A lot of nice looking ears in here though. I'm very excited for this coming. This is also a dry corn. So I'd really like to try a few more varieties to wear. I can find one or two that are the favorite and, and just have those be our staple corn. It's fun growing multiple varieties, but you have to be careful with cross-pollination. They have to be distanced. So it's just easier if I have two or three varieties I plant around the yard. I'm not going to lie. I don't remember what I planted here. I'll have to look at my chart. But um, whatever it is, I'm excited. That's a rogue hollyhock. This is a weed. Uh, and then we got a squash coming in here. And then that's on the other side, our black thutsu. This is the black sesame. Some of these are starting off slow, but they are starting to pick up the pace as our weather cools down. It's the roselle hibiscus. They've really, oh look, there's another little cutie. They've really started to pop in the last couple weeks. I think once I give everything a deep feeding, it'll be really great. So this is our little kitty pool of rice. Now here's the problem. Rice is a grass, right? Corn is a grass, rice is a grass. I am almost positive that these dark green ones here are grass grass, not corn grass. But obviously I don't want to pull it in case it is in fact corn and not just grass grass. So kind of at a loss of what to do because obviously I don't want grass, especially if that's like Bermuda grass I got in there. That is just a nightmare with a, a root system. It'll it'll be the roots alone will be so invasive so yeah i think we'll give it a, a little more time but i'm not really sure because obviously this is rice these are rice rice has more of a distinct this to me does not look like rice but i could totally be wrong it would not be the first time and here we've got the shin Kuroda, the little carrots they're really starting to come in as well let's see if we can see a collar here not yet but we got that and then we've got two shishitos in here that i did not expect the carrots to grow so much faster than the peppers that's usually not the case for me but that's okay i just go with it gardening's supposed to be fun so here we are over at the grow bag garden and i'm really proud and really happy at how this is turning out even though i still have not taken the time to replant my runner beans which is fine though i have plenty of time you can plant beans last year i was planting beans like all the way through the second or third week of november and they were coming in until I want to say I didn't plant as many because it was my first year growing here and I didn't want to just waste a whole bunch of seeds. It was more to see, take notes, what will grow, what won't grow. But I need to get those planted. I still need to transplant some of these. Like I got the two here I'm gonna take one of them, plant them down there in one of the empty spots. I've got a few of these that have, have doubles, but they're getting so nice and big. These held up really well for the wind for keeping these guys from falling over. These guys that are staked, that was another job I had to do yesterday uh, when it was windy out because they were literally blown all the way over. So these, though, did not blow over at all. And it's better if you can go and not stake them. It actually makes their, their, trun their trunk, their stem stronger. So, yeah, but I had to with these because I didn't want them to snap. These all have flowers which is awesome these guys all need to be fed too these are absolutely beautiful this is again this is the homestead uh roma tomato from it's the roma tomato from mi gardener from the homestead collection it's an heirloom and it is it's so healthy and so beautiful out of all the tomatoes i grow these really are just incredibly awesome and the germination on them has been insane so you can see lots of flowers coming in right we've got our Jerusalem artichoke that is starting to really pop too now that I've realized that 
they are all at this point taking well from the Oyas and I need to pay better attention and refill them almost every day. But that's okay. Our nasturtiums, also we're having a little bit of trouble with water, but they are now starting to go, that one especially. And then these are our different varieties of cucumbers. We'll get to that on the other side. But yeah, so these guys, very impressive. These guys aren't bad. These are the cream sausage, also an heirloom variety, Roma tomato, also from MI Gardener's collection. And a lot of them are coming in really nice too. So I can't complain. They're this whole row all the way down. And then this one is the uh, Supremo Roma. That is, I think, a hybrid. Um, so I will not be saving seeds from it. But so far, supposed to have a really, I watch one of my favorite homesteading gardening YouTubers is Brie Ellis. And she talks all the time about the yields on the Supremo Roma and that she likes um, the consistency, how they're made for sauce and things like that. And she's not really a tomato person, so for her, like, it's all about the Roma. But these are really coming in. This one's beautiful. That one's beautiful. But yeah, a lot of these guys are coming in nice, too. These are here, the chocolate, what are they, chocolate sunflower, some kind of chocolate sunflower. I'll have to look it up again. But they are starting to come in nice. And these guys, you can see, these guys have multiple, oh, you. Chickens are going to have a treat here. Anyway, I'll come back for him in just a second. I need my gloves. But you can see these guys have multiple heads. So to have multiple flowers. And they have heads down here too. And they even have, you can see, they actually have full-on stalks coming out with more flowers. So this should be really pretty. I've seen some pictures of them from other people I know that are growing them. And they're this beautiful, like, burgundy, kind of burgundy brownish color. So, and then we've got... That eggplant got eaten by something, but we got this one coming in. That's a jewel amethyst eggplant. It puts off small eggplants. The black beauty, I forgot to replant. And then our peppers are coming in really nice. So these are the sweet cayenne peppers. You can see they're coming in. And then this one got eaten. That's right. I didn't, I could always transplant though, because I've got, again, I think it's this one. Yeah, it has two here and peppers will also transplant well, but this is the sweet bell blend. So kind of like lunchbox peppers, but more like bell pepper, mini bell pepper size, bigger than a sweet pepper. Take off this one. It broke in the wind. And then these are the lilac bell pepper. And they're starting to really come in nice now too. Not so much the ones under here, but I mentioned that I didn't kind of think that through as far as how crazy this beautiful corn would get. And then back along this bag, the runner beans are coming in. These are scarlet runner beans. So they are coming in and growing. You can see they're like all the way up here, all the way up here. Um, but I do need to still replant them down here. Let me take care of my little unwelcomed guests. And then I'll be back and we'll head over to, where we head over to? I think first we'll go to the front, the Halloween bed. And then we'll come back and finish right over here at my blue bed. So we are out front here near the Halloween bed. You can see these are all trying to bury trees coming back up. If you've been watching it all with my, my cleaning up of this area, you can see they're a lot like the Palo Verde and a lot like the Mesquite. They will keep coming in and coming. You just have to keep digging them up. So these guys over here, they are a beautiful tree and they give off great shade. The problem is that they are toxic to people and dogs and unfortunately our dogs have eaten a couple of the berries that they dropped. Not really berries or seeds, but so these guys need to get pickaxed out. What is this? That's just a weed. That's easy. But yeah, so that's the thing I definitely want to get done tonight is pull these guys before they get any bigger and get any bigger root system. And here we are over in, I don't even know what to call this bed. It's just kind of like a bed right now. It's got our rogue leek that's coming in. It's got our Swiss chard that's been growing since like February. Got our sage, that's been doing great. I need to really do something about the sage and the basil that's over here because it's crazy. Marigold that fell over and is still growing. And then over here, got our zinnias. These, these things are so big and it's funny. Every time that I grow a huge plant and I'm like, that's the biggest one I've ever grown. It's like the next season's like, hold my beer. These are hands down. I grew huge zinnias in Encino. These are at least three times the size and they're just, they're so pretty. Now this guy, unfortunately, I lost about a third of him in the wind yesterday because his stake, I, I've been saying I'm going to restake him and I haven't. 
So I have a new bamboo stake in there that's holding him up. And I pulled a couple of flowers off these guys earlier, but this is my basil. My basil is basically a tree. This one and that one. And I'm very excited, but I do need to go ahead and cut it way down so that it's manageable and also not taking over everything. Because in here, right, so this is the, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's R-E-Z-H-A. I don't know if that's Reza, Reza, but it's a Macedonian growing pepper. This is a small one that I can harvest. I'm probably going to eat tonight. There's a couple more growing in on this one. But this guy back here, this is the whole reason. He's going to turn red too. But this was, for me, what, what was so... This is what drew me to this pepper is I love the texture on the skin and what it looks like. It just looks almost like it's aged. So I'm very, this one's a big one. I'm really excited for that one, but it's funny. So I completely forgot that in here, in this craziness, that is this pepper patch, I planted two jalapenos. I completely forgot about them because they're in here like this. And is it this one? Yeah. Well, this has one. So there's a jalapeno. And then I forgot there's also another one back here. Got our marigolds here. This guy I need to trim off. He also snapped, you can see right there. Take this off, probably pop it in some water. Might as well just take him right now. It's always a bummer, but it's my own fault because I knew I needed to give them better support and I just had other priorities. But yeah, so this is also in here, another jalapeno. And look at that. But it's funny, I'm like, what did I grow? Oh, yeah, I completely forgot. And then these are, I can't remember. I think these are Greek pepperoncini. Like my labels on these, I got a new pen with the, oh, they are, look at that. This one actually does still have it on there. Okay, so Greek pepperoncinis. Got more marigolds. The marigolds in this bed, look at this. This is one plant. This is one plant. Look how beautiful these are. They're absolutely stunning. I'm definitely going to be growing these again and those. I mean, these all. I want to say, are these French marigolds? I'll have to look and see. But yeah, I've got a lot of these to take off and get their seeds. If you have never taken seeds from a marigold, it's so easy. You literally just, let's see if I can do this. Okay, so this, see, there's all the petals in here, right inside here. These are all the seeds. So I will pluck this head off and take it inside along with all these other ones that'll dry a little, dry a little more. But yeah, look at that marigold. And then we've got more of my personal favorite, which is my sugar rush peach. I don't know. This is what, oh, this is another Corno de Toro. See, no, no flowers yet, but I'm so excited for that other guy. But yeah, this is sugar rush peach peppers. And they are just like the ones in the pepper patch loaded down. This has been my best producer this whole year since I planted them. These are more of the Anaheim Chili Hot. And again, I need to stake them because look at this, this plant is huge. And it's just weighted down with all the fruit. But look at them. They're starting to turn. They are so, oh, they're so nice and firm. Like they're perfect. I've never, this is hands down in what, six years? Oh, look, there's a little baby. In six years, is hands down the best, best pepper crop I've ever had. Where's this one from? Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is a second Anaheim hot that's planted right next to this guy. Oh my gosh. Look at that. That is huge. And he's got flowers and new, look, new peppers coming in there. But look at these. Okay, you definitely need to be staked up. I will be cutting some bamboo. I have a feeling I'm going to work out here tonight. I'm not doing an all-nighter though. My, I know I need to get some rest. Lemongrass is looking good. Our blue pumpkins that are growing all over are looking fantastic. They need a little bit of cleanup. But overall, they are just spreading. I want to say I'm pretty sure that's the blue pea queen. But I could be wrong. It's either the blue pea queen or it is I'm trying to think. But it could also be a winged bean. So we'll see when it starts putting off. But yeah, we've got all these pumpkins grown in. I still, like it's like three weeks now and he's putting on new growth, new green growth. It looks beautiful. But I totally need to top this guy off and give him a steak. And then this is, these are both Oswald eggplant. That one and this guy. You see he's got a beautiful flower in there. So I'd like to get my first one of him. Let's come over this way. You can see the blue pumpkins are really filling in over here. I think I've finally got the water down to where everything's really happy. They're 
so pretty. I think that, what is this one? This is, that's a winged bean. They haven't been coming in. The ones, I gotta be honest. I would say that most of my Baker Creek seeds have not done very well. These are my dapple gray dry beans. So they're coming in. They just need to, they're dry beans. So they'll stay on here until the plant dries out, pull the whole plant. You can see they're coming in nicely. I do need to feed everything. I feel so bad. I've been neglecting, neglecting so much here. And then this is the pumpkin that's been coming in. He's still growing strong. If I had to guess, this, I would guess this is probably going to be somewhere between 10 and 12 pounds at the rate he's growing and how he's doing. And his vine just keeps going. It's gorgeous. We've got some okra. Oh, look, I hope he gets pollinated. Got some okra here. These guys were slow to start, but they're starting to go. But this guy, oh, this one's ready. I'm probably going to, along with the noodle beans, I'll probably harvest this and eat him too. And you could see, if you don't know, okra are in the hibiscus family. So when the flower opens, it looks like a hibiscus. And then this is blue Hopi corn that I have not really been too thrilled about. All the seeds from MI Gardener came in with beautiful husks, beautiful silks. The ones that I got off Amazon to fill in the gaps because I had some issues happen with the water and a lot of the seeds didn't germinate or germinated and just didn't last, I'm very disappointed in. So we will see... But I think pretty much my gardener seeds are the ones that sort of, yeah, you can see like, so there is no, I have no yellow corn anywhere near here. This one will get tossed. You can see the bugs in there, but I have no yellow corn that I'm growing. So my guess is that a lot of these that are not from MI Gardener are probably, probably were not done somewhere where it was just the blue corn. It was probably grown somewhere and got cross pollinated, which would explain a lot. So yeah well go ahead harvest these the ones that aren't don't have the little little insects and stuff in them like that a couple insects is one thing but there's some insects that when i see them in corn it's a no this looks like a decent ear it feels like a decent ear um but yeah so we'll let these guys they also have to dry on here and then we will take them save them grind them up when we need to but i'm not going to save any seeds from here because if these did get cross pollinated with uh things that aren't like this that aren't a true blue hopi it's not going to be blue hopi so it's unfortunate, but like I said, I ordered a few packs, so I have plenty uh, from MI Gardener, and then I'll start saving my seeds again, but either way. So yeah, I think we have one more spot, and that's back there, and then that's it. Got another okra growing here. This is the only one that the rabbits did not eat when it was little. I see a little butterfly there. Well, it's actually a moth, but it looks like a butterfly. Probably gonna lay some eggs got a flower on this guy. I'm going to wait until he's probably about three feet, four feet tall. Then we'll trim him and he'll push out and get bushier. Same with that guy over there. This one is, let's see what variety this guy is. I planted like four varieties. This guy is an emerald. So he's going to be an emerald. And then I need to stake him too. I may see him get blown over. Our pumpkins here. These are two more. These are white night eggplants that got eaten down by rabbits but they are putting on new growth and hopefully that little cutie also managed to get pollinated which would be great but yeah so there you have it that is a quick walk through and assessment of the garden right now i probably will stay out here a couple more hours do a little more work but uh yeah so stay tuned for shorts if you enjoy the shorts if you like these longer videos I don't know when I'll do another longer video. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to ask. I will answer them as best I can as soon as I can. Hope you guys all have a fantastic rest of your weekend.